Did you know that the Cenozoic era, often known as the Age of Mammals, spans 66 million years and is still ongoing? This is the time period that followed the extinction of the dinosaurs, a massive event that cleared the stage for mammals to take the spotlight. The Cenozoic era, which we're currently living in, can be divided into three distinct epochs. We have the Paleogene, the Neogene, and the Quaternary. Each of these epochs carries its own unique characteristics and tells a different part of the story of life on Earth. Let's start at the beginning. The Paleogene period, spanning from about 66 to 23 million years ago, was a time of significant change. The world was still reeling from the mass extinction event that wiped out the dinosaurs. This catastrophic event, however, opened up a world of opportunities for mammals. They began to rise, diversify, and fill the evolutionary niches left vacant by the dinosaurs. Moving forward, we find ourselves in the Neogene period, which lasted from 23 to roughly two and a half million years ago. This was a time of further diversification and expansion for mammals, where they began to adapt to new environments and lifestyles. And finally, we come to the Quaternary period, which started around two and a half million years ago and continues to this day. This epoch is marked by the evolution of hominids, our own ancestors, leading up to the emergence of modern humans. But the Cenozoic era isn't just about the rise of mammals, it's also a time of incredible geological and climatic shifts. The continents moved into their current positions, and the climate oscillated between periods of warm and cold, shaping the world as we know it today. This is a story of resilience, adaptation, and survival. It's about the dawn of a new era, a time when life on Earth took a dramatic turn. So, as the dinosaurs disappeared, a new age dawned, one that would be ruled by mammals. Welcome to the Cenozoic Era. The Cenozoic Era saw the rise of some of the most impressive mammals to ever walk the Earth. During this epoch, the world was not short of behemoths. One such titan was the Glyptodon. This colossal creature, akin to a modern armadillo, but the size of a small car, roamed the grasslands of South America. Covered by a domed, bony shell, the Glyptodon was a walking fortress. Its tail, tipped with a mace-like structure, was a formidable weapon against predators. Next, we journey to the forests and plains where the Megatherium, or giant ground sloth, made its home. Standing on its hind legs, this creature reached heights comparable to modern elephants. Imagine a sloth, but supersized and as tall as an elephant, that was the Megatherium. With its massive size and long, curved claws, the Megatherium was a master at foraging for food, reaching leaves and branches that were inaccessible to smaller creatures. Lastly, we delve into the chilly steppes of prehistoric Siberia, where the Elasmotherium, or the Siberian Unicorn, grazed. Despite its nickname, the Siberian Unicorn bore little resemblance to the mythical creature. This behemoth was more like a mammoth-sized rhino, boasting a single, enormous horn on its forehead. Its horn, thought to be used for attracting mates and warding off competition, was a symbol of its dominance on the icy plains. These colossal mammals were more than just their sizes. They were the epitome of adaptation and evolution, each perfectly suited to their habitats and lifestyles. The Glyptodon's armor-like shell, the Megatherium's towering stature and long claws, and the Elasmotherium's formidable horn, each attribute was a testament to the survival strategies these giants employed. These enormous creatures, long extinct, were the giants of their time, ruling the Cenozoic landscapes. Their reign, however, was not to last forever. As we journey further into the Cenozoic era, we'll explore the theories of their gigantism, their eventual extinction, and the rise of a new species that would come to dominate the Earth, us. But that's a story for another time. Until then, let's marvel at the majesty of these incredible beasts, the true giants of the Cenozoic era. Why were these mammals so gigantic? Well, scientists have a few theories. Let's delve into the fascinating world of academic conjecture and explore some of the potential reasons for the colossal size of creatures during the Cenozoic era. One theory points to an abundance of food sources. The Cenozoic era, often dubbed the Age of Mammals, was characterized by the proliferation of flowering plants, a dietary staple for many of these titanic beasts. This verdant environment, rich in nutrients, might have allowed these animals to grow to such extraordinary sizes. It's like having an all-you-can-eat buffet open 24-7. 
Another theory is the relative lack of predators. With the dinosaurs now out of the picture, these mammals could grow larger without fear of becoming someone else's dinner. It's as if the playground bully moved away, and now the other kids are free to grow and thrive. Climate conditions also played a significant role, according to some researchers. The Cenozoic era was a period of significant climate change, with the planet cooling over time. Larger bodies are better at retaining heat, an advantage in a cooling world. It's like wearing a giant fur coat in a snowstorm. You're going to stay warmer than someone in a light jacket. Lastly, some scientists suggest that these mammals grew so large simply because they could. In the absence of environmental constraints or competition, organisms tend to evolve towards larger sizes, a phenomenon known as Cope's rule. It's as if you had an unlimited budget to build your dream house. Wouldn't you make it as big and grand as possible? While the exact reasons remain a mystery, the vast size of these creatures is a testament to the diverse and dynamic nature of life during the Cenozoic era. So, while we may never know the exact causes of their gigantism, these theories offer captivating insights into life's incredible capacity for adaptation and survival. However, the Cenozoic era was not just a time of growth and prosperity for these mammals. As the saying goes, every coin has two sides, and this era was no exception. As we journey through this timeline, we encounter a darker chapter, a period of loss and extinction that shadows the vibrancy of life's evolution. The era, peppered with numerous extinction events, witnessed the demise of many of these giant creatures. These episodes of extinction were not isolated incidents, but rather a series of unfortunate events that gradually whittled away the diversity of life. The Glyptodon, the Megatherium, the Elasmotherium, these gigantic beasts of the Cenozoic, all met their end during this era. But what led to these extinctions? There are many hypotheses, each as intriguing as the next. Climate change is one of the prime suspects. As the Earth's climate oscillated between periods of warmth and ice ages, many species found it increasingly difficult to adapt. The severe shifts in temperature, changes in vegetation, and fluctuations in sea levels may have been too much for these creatures to cope with. Another theory points to competition as a significant driver of these extinctions. As new species evolved, they competed with the existing ones for resources. This evolutionary arms race led to the survival of the fittest, where the less adaptable species were edged out of existence. Then there's the theory that implicates us humans. As hominids began to evolve and spread across the globe, their interaction with the environment and other species could have triggered the extinction of many of these mammals. Overhunting, habitat destruction, and the introduction of new diseases could all have played a role. In the grand scheme of things, the Cenozoic era offers us a poignant lesson. It shows us the fragility of life and the devastating impact of rapid environmental changes and uncontrolled human activity. The Cenozoic era, while a time of great biological diversity, was also marked by numerous extinction events. It serves as a stark reminder of the delicate balance of life on Earth and a call to action for us to protect the diversity that remains. Towards the end of the Cenozoic era, a new kind of mammal began to emerge. These were no ordinary mammals. They were hominids, our ancient ancestors. As forests gave way to grasslands, these hominids found themselves in a changing world. They began to walk upright, freeing their hands for other tasks. Over time, they started to shape the world around them. They used tools, harnessed fire, and developed complex social structures. They were not the biggest or the strongest, yet their intelligence and adaptability set them apart. These early humans began to spread across the globe, adapting to a variety of environments. From the plains of Africa to the icy tundra of Siberia, wherever they went, they thrived. Over thousands of years, they became us. We are the legacy of these early pioneers, the latest chapter in a story that began millions of years ago. The Cenozoic era, the age of mammals, ultimately gave rise to us, humans. As the inheritors of the Cenozoic era, we have a crucial role to play. Our actions, both large and small, echo throughout the eons, influencing the course of life on Earth. Our era, much like the Cenozoic, is marked by profound changes. Yet unlike the natural shifts of the past, Many of today's changes are driven by human activity. The rapid pace of these changes is causing extinctions at an unprecedented rate, 
threatening the rich tapestry of life that took millions of years to weave. Each species lost is a thread pulled from this tapestry, altering the intricate balance of our ecosystems. But we have the power to halt this unraveling. Through conservation efforts, we can protect endangered species, preserve habitats, and maintain biodiversity. In the spirit of the Cenozoic era, our age of mammals, let us strive to protect and preserve the diverse life that shares this planet with us. The future of our era is in our hands.